Good morning friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. We've just come down to the lake here at Frampton. It's a beautiful early Sunday morning. Birds are tweeting. There's a lot of swans swimming and the wind has decided to stay back in bed. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no wind this morning at all, but there are a massive amount of swans on the lake. Yeah. Last time we were here, there was two swans. <laughs> and now it's like 40. <laughs> there are a lot of swans. Stunning though, isn't it? Mm. If truth be known, we haven't been out on the lake for quite a few weeks because Ro and I have both had a bit of a touch of the lurgy one after each other. So we're coming back out today to try and, um, you know, dust off and brush up on the skills that we learned in the Lake District. Yeah, if you haven't seen the episodes in the Lake District, you should definitely check those out because we had a lot of fun up there. It was incredible, wasn't it? It was a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're just checking out the weather now and, well, the wind now, and nothing is happening wind-wise. What we were hoping to do is in a few weeks, Dan has got the chance to race here on a GP14, a beautiful all wooden boat. And uh, we thought we'd practice creating our own course and see how well we could do going around the boys and like as if we were racing, just practice that, wasn't it? But Yeah, we can poodle around now, but I'm not sure whether or not we can sail a course confidently. So we'll, we'll give that a go, if we can get out on the water today. Yeah. The wind indicator is doing absolutely nothing. I did check the wind. There's supposed to be a bit this morning, but I just checked it again. And at some of the points, there's zero wind. So I had an email from the birthing secretary to say that he's had to do some maintenance here and move a few of the boats around, including ours. They are nestled together now, which is nice. For those of you that don't know, we have a girl um, and we have a wayfarer. So we're just going to go and check out how they've been moved and where they are. Let's go see. And this isn't for the sun like it was in the Lake District. This is because it's cold <laughs> and I haven't got my winter hat out today. <laughs> I still don't have quite the right footwear. No. For this sort of <laughs> shenanigans. And I can tell you, it's getting quite cold on the tootsies. <laughs> oh, I have found you some nice neoprene boots with, which look like they've got a really, um, what's the word? Non-slip sole. That's what you want, isn't it? You want a soul that doesn't slip. Here we are. There's good medicine. And there's mouse next to each other. Ooh. Oh, good. Got a puddle. We oh. have a puddle. I think it might be um, plan B for the filming today, my love. Thank you, Dix. I think the sailing is out of the question in terms of sailing a course. Seems... Sad face. You can't do much sailing if you haven't got much wind. So I think we're going to have to come up with a creative, even better plan for today. Oh, I like the sound of that. Hello everyone, here we are back at home. This is plan B. We had no wind at the lake, so we've come back here to do a video that we intended to do anyway, which is five things we learned a few years ago when we were in Salcombe doing some training that we had forgotten and that we relearn again up in Oswater with Joe. Thanks for joining. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. So number one is the tiller grip. Um, I've been holding the tiller all sorts of different ways. Uh, no doubt you're going to be splicing in a bit of footage of the different types oh, of yeah. embarrassing ways I was using the tiller. Or you could say creative. Um, alternative ways. Alternative, outside the box ways, possibly even innovative. <laughs> so yeah, I was holding it in a dagger grip to begin with. Um, but now, you know, we learned to hold the uh, tiller behind the back when we've got an aft main and be in, in the frying pan grip. This is your standard position. Yeah. Tiller extension behind you and holding it like the handle of a frying pan. Oh, so it's behind you, right, yeah. that makes total sense. So that's one of the big things that, that we've changed since being away in the Lake District. Yeah, that was really helpful actually, wasn't it? Yeah, massively helpful. Yeah. And, you know, just, just the whole feeling like you've got space in the boat and not getting tied up and, you know, feeling like the tiller extension is too long, all these sort of um, 
incorrect assumptions you make as a beginner. We tried shortening the tiller extension because we thought, well, it's maybe too long for two people to be in the boat. We were trying all sorts of things, weren't we? But actually, it was just the position and the, the way we held it. Disaster. <laughs> Which a lot of you did comment on at the time, and thank you for that. Yeah, the more I'm learning, the more I realise what a patient bunch of viewers we've got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's number one, is just getting the tiller grip right type of setup you've got, whether it's a centre main or, 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 or an aft main. I feel like we sort of understand that now. Yeah. Although we're sticking to the aft main for the time being, just while we're still developing our skills. Yeah. No doubt we will, we will chop and change and find our preference moving forward. So what we have learned, and just we're recapping what we've learned ourselves, which is if you're going to tack, if I'm at the helm, I would say ready about to the crew. I'm going to say to the crew, ready about. I would say ready. Ready. And then I would, and then I would position myself and get ready. And to push the tiller extension and then say, Lee Ho. Shouting Lee Ho. Lee Ho. Oh, here's a special bonus point though. Oh, go on. Do you know why it's called Lee Ho? Oh, now I want to be able to say I do and come up with something really flashy, but no, tell us, Daniel. Um, well, it's actually in one of our comments from one of our special viewers. Oh, sorry. I should remember that. Go on. I can't remember either, but we, 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 <laughs> oh, we'll <no>. try. <laughs> and if you're jibing and I'm at the helm, I would say stand by to jibe. I would say ready. ready. And then I'd say jibe ho and off we'd go. Jibe ho. Uh, centre board you've put here, centre board. When yeah. to have it up, and when to have it down, or, you know, how far up and down it should be. Yes, I, I'm still struggling with this one. I still don't feel that confident in when to have it up and when to have it down. But I do know out of experience recently that when I forgot to put the centreboard down and we were, we, were, we were launching on a lee shore wind, I didn't put it down, so we just drifted over onto the other pontoon and got stuck. So it's, that one's really in my head because of the experience. It's making it more exact, really. The basic yeah. principles of it kind of understand, but the, yeah. um, but the, the nuance of it, yeah. still need to learn. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you, so you've got point of sail, which are gonna change how far down or up the center board is. Yeah. And we should probably put in something around about here, what that is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so still quite a bit to learn on the centreboard, even though it's like we're definitely getting there. We're moving forward with it, aren't we? You know? And what was it Joe taught us with the centreboard when you're, when you're jibing? He was basically saying that the centreboard is, is there to control sort of sideways forces. Yeah. So when you're going upwind, you need that centreboard down. So the force of the main sheet has got that is being pushed against in the water. There's a different um, amount of force from air to water, which is quite a big amount, which is why the centre board is so small and the, and the, the main sail is so big yeah. in relative okay. proportion to it. Oh, okay, interesting. So, so if that's not there, when, when that wind's being pushed into this, and creating that, that force, then this just gets pushed across and you slide across the, the water. Right. But when you're going downwind, the boom's swinging across and creating that force. So you actually don't, it's not a problem to have that slide. That was it. it. And if you do have that down, it probably isn't the end of the world in light, lighter winds, but maybe in heavier winds, which we haven't even been in yet. No. Um, I think you've got a risk of capsize. Tell me if that's wrong. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> We're still learning. We're still learning. What's next? Number four. Lying to. Oh, this was really helpful, actually, when we were up in Ellswater on the lake. Lying to, which is a way to stop the boat when you're in the middle of the water. Yeah, it's just so we've got a chance. Because I'd be in the beginning of when we were learning, I was more or less at the helm all the time. We didn't really fully know how to recover or how to launch or any of those sorts of things. So there's quite a lot to, for us to think about before even swapping over. Yeah. Whereas now we've got this lying to technique, which allows us to swap over sort of mid-sail, <laughs> which essentially means you're gonna get, we get a lot more time in each other's roles. What was it we did? We had to point the boat into a a close reach and then to the point where the, the sails are then flapping and basically you're not um, moving anywhere are you? Yeah so if the wind direction is coming straight if you if we look at it from the top yeah and the wind direction is, direction is coming straight down like that my understanding is you have the boat just off at an angle here yeah and then your sails are just left to flap and flap in the wind basically 
yeah? yeah. So if you have your, if your, yeah, and then that allows you to get power again quickly by pulling power back into the sails again. Yeah. If you've got it dead straight, you've just got a little bit more of a problem getting the power back into the sails, mm. is my understanding. Yeah. T tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> This is about recovering onto shore with a wind that's blowing into shore. So basically we, we did learn in our original training how to lower the main sail. Mm. So then you sort of just bring yourself in on the jib. The first time we went out and, do you remember the first time we went out and we sailed at Frampton and we were coming back in and, the, and one of the women in, who was in the races, race, came out and was shouting, yeah. I say shouting at us, giving us instructions from the shore. Yeah, to try. Of what to do as we were recovering. Yeah. Um, and one of them was to, to lower the main sheet because we were coming, we were downwind as we were coming back into the, the beach basically. Yeah. And we lowered it really early on. So we just ended up marooned. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of relearned that skill. Yeah. We still haven't got that nailed. And also no. you can have these uh, sort of uh, wind shadows. So mm. say you're coming, that's, which is what we had when we got to the beach. Yeah. If we'd have got the momentum of that right, we wouldn't have ever had to use the paddle. But on that occasion, we did use the paddle. Yeah. Um, so we're still having to use backups. But again, that's something else just starting to come, isn't it? But these are all things like I'm looking forward to practicing more and more so you really can bed them in. I mean, all of this, you can't practice it enough, can you? It's practice, practice, time on the water. Yeah, I think the other thing is, well, is just getting it clear in your head. Mm. Like, it's one thing doing it, isn't it? It's another thing trying to explain it to camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's five essentials that we forgot, forgot. and yes. have began to relearn. Yes. What would be really fantastic would be a more succinct explanation of how this forces work between a main cell and the centerboard. Yes, anyone out there specifically willing to write in the comments about the forces, you're going to get extra points. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, please send us a thumbs up and thank you so much for joining. Thanks for watching us on this journey of learning to sail. Bye bye. Ciao.